It is the duty of nations as well as of men to own their dependence upon the overruling power of God, to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow, yet with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon, and to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations only are blessed whose God is the Lord. And insomuch as we know that by His divine law, nations like individuals are subjected to punishments and chastisements in this world, may we not justly fear that the awful calamity of civil war which now desolates the land may be but a punishment inflicted upon us for our presumptuous sins to the needful end of our national reformation as a whole people? We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. It has seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. Father in heaven, creator of all and source of all goodness and love, please look kindly upon us and receive our heartfelt gratitude in this time of giving thanks. Thank you for all the graces and blessings you have bestowed upon us, spiritual and temporal, our faith and religious heritage, our food and shelter, our health, the loves we have for one another, our family and friends. Dear Father, in your infinite generosity, please grant us continued graces and blessings throughout the coming year. This we ask in the name of Jesus, your Son and our brother. Amen.
We welcome you to St. Anne's St. Mary Parish. We gather here at St. Mary Mattingly Settlement this Thanksgiving Day, 2019. Our opening hymn is number 499, We Gather Together, 499. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This is our last Mass of this liturgical year, because when we come Saturday, it's a brand new church year, the season of Advent, a time of hope, of waiting, of going from darkness to the light. And so today we choose this 34th week in ordinary time, the book of Daniel, our first reading, then we'll share a gospel more in tune with the thanksgiving that God has blessed us so richly with. Let us pause now and reflect upon our own challenges uh, in standing up for our faith, as Daniel did, and he was thrown into the lion's den. Lord Jesus, you came to set the captives free. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you instill us with gifts we need on this journey of life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Lord, you heal and forgive and reconcile and give us wholeness and holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Father all-powerful, your gifts of love are countless and your goodness infinite. As we come before you on Thanksgiving Day here at St. Anne's St. Mary Parish with gratitude for your kindness, Open our hearts to have concern for every man, woman, and child, so that we may share your gifts in loving service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We feast on God's holy word. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Some men rushed into the upper chamber of Daniel's home and found him praying and pleading before his God. So they went to remind the king about the prohibition. Did you not decree, O king, that no one is to address a petition to God or man for 30 days except to you, O king? Otherwise he shall be cast into a den of lions the king answered them, The decree is absolute, irrevocable under the Mede and Persian law. To this they replied, Daniel, the Jewish exile, has paid no attention to you, O king, or to the decree you issued. Three times a day he offers his prayer. The king was deeply grieved at this news, and he made up his mind to save Daniel. He worked till sunset to rescue him. But these men insisted. They said, Keep in mind, O king, that under the Mede and Persian law, every royal prohibition or decree is irrevocable. 
So the king ordered Daniel to be brought and cast into the lion's den. To Daniel he said, May your God, whom you serve so constantly, save you. To forestall any tampering, the king sealed with his own ring and the rings of the lords the stone that had been brought to block the opening of the den. Then the king returned to his palace for the night. He refused to eat, and he dismissed the entertainers. Since sleep was impossible for him, the king rose very early the next morning and hastened to the lion's den. As he drew near, he, grew out, he cried out to Daniel sor sorrowfully, O Daniel, servant of the living God, has the God whom you serve so constantly been able to save you from the lions? Daniel answered the king, O king, live forever. May God has, my God has sent his angel and closed the lions' mouths so that they have not hurt me. For I have been found innocent before him. Neither to you have I done any harm, O king. This gave the king great joy. At his order, Daniel was removed from the den, unhurt, because he trusted in his God. The king then ordered the men who had accused Daniel, along with their children and their wives, to be cast into the lion's den. Before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then King Darius wrote to the nations and peoples of every language, wherever they dwell on the earth, all peace to you. I decree that throughout my royal domain, the God of Daniel is to be reverenced and feared. For he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be without end. He is a deliverer and a savior, working signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. And he delivered Daniel from the lion's power. The word of the Lord.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus answered, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. I've interfaced uh, this 34th Thursday of Ordinary Time, the last Mass that we have of the day, with uh, the Thanksgiving theme uh, that we have uh, for our readings that are prepared in the lectionary. And I think that this whole notion of the yoke, uh, we are farm people, we live in areas very close to the Amish, uh, people work the land and cultivate the land. This is a time of harvest, it's a time hopefully of plenty a time where we start storing for the winter months. And as the yoke is on the oxen or the, uh, the you might say, the, the uh, courses, whatever they uh, yoke the, um, up to, I think it's important to realize that uh, a yoke makes it easier. It distributes the weight. Um, you notice as you ride up through the Mennonite or the Amish country, uh, you see the little farmers out there just kind of cultivating and tending the fields. Uh, and it distributes the weight among all of the, the legs uh, between the, the bodies, and so it makes it much easier. The same thing, I think, with our relationship to Jesus. You know, as we yoke ourselves to the Lord, our burdens become lighter. Uh, they are lifted. Uh, when we share uh, that which is joy, it's doubled. When we share our burdens or our challenges, our sorrows, uh, they seem to be lessened. They seem to be cut in half. Well, today is a very special day, and I always like to gather uh, on Thanksgiving because it's America's unifying holiday. You know, it gives us crucial cohesion, and it's a sign of gratitude or thanksgiving. And the word for mass, Eucharist, comes from the Greek word Eucharistia, which means to give God thanks. And so that's basically uh, what we are all about. I think my love for history tells us that Nearly 400-year evolution since the Pilgrims and the Native Americans gathered at that Plymouth, Massachusetts. You know, the Continental Congress established the first national Thanksgiving clear back in 1777 as a unifying day when at one time and with one voice, the good people may express the grateful feelings of their hearts, echoing the majority religious affiliation Congress invoked the merits of Jesus Christ. You know, we live in a very different culture and a different climate today. Uh, you know, Congress is a little shy about such statements today. And yet these are the bedrock foundations about which we were founded. I think it's good to go back to our roots, uh, go back to our family roots, go back to our cultural and religious roots, our Catholic roots. I was reading some things this week um, Squanto, the Native American, uh, it appears from historians that he was baptized Catholic. And here he played such a pivotal role in all of this. It was back in 1789 when our first president, George Washington, made the religious appeal less particular. And what he tried to do was focus on enshrining the values of the new country by declaring it a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to, and he said, Almighty God. Very important. Especially, he said, 
for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed. And so you see this intertwining. Uh, sometime in our country, there came to be this wall, this divide, this separation of church and state. And as we really look back on uh, this natural law, divine law, we see that God is the very anchor of all law. That's why I chose that first reading from the day. King Darius, he had this law, it was the Medes and the Persians. Um, you know, if you prayed to any other god, um, you had to be thrown in the lion's den. Well, he was not doing that, but some folks came up and saw Daniel. They caught him praying. He was praying three times a day. He was fasting. He was trying to do all the right things. And they went to the king and says, King, this is absolute. You have to throw him in the lion's den. Uh, and he didn't want to do it. The king had a great respect for Daniel, just like he had a great respect for the three young men, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were thrown into the fiery furnace. Uh, look what happened. Uh, they were there with, like a fourth, a son of man. Uh, he glowed. Uh, it was like an angel. And they were unharmed. He kept turning the furnace up more and more, seven times hotter. They should have been incinerated, and yet they weren't. Uh, so you can see the king is perplexed. This God, uh, people are willing to sacrifice their lives for him. I think we need to hear these stories. Well, I think Abraham Lincoln proclaimed Thanksgiving a national holiday in 1863, and then uh, Franklin Roosevelt fixed the date uh, to the fourth Thursday in November. But I like this proclamation. Uh, remember, our country was going through a great civil war uh, with Abraham Lincoln. It just tore us apart at the seams. Uh, relatives were fighting relatives. I love going down to Gettysburg, uh, making the little trips, the little journeys, uh, just to see uh, where this moment of history is all about. Uh, you know, we have generals that we know about, you know, and we, we I've been to Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, you know, you've got Robert E. Lee's mansion up there. You've got uh, John Kennedy's uh, eternal flame. You've got all of those folks uh, that have sacrificed their lives in many wars. Uh, you know, of this century and beyond. Uh, you've got especially World War I and World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, uh, all these skirmishes. We see uh, the military honors given to the tomb of the unknown soldier. Remember when I'd go up there and just watch the changing of the guard, there was not any noise whatsoever. It just seemed like a, a reverential silence came upon. And so, this is uh, the climate. This is the, the, the milieu. And so what Lincoln said, resonating with the anguish of a nation engaged in a civil war, it attempts to reassure beleaguered citizens that the Union remains strong and to call upon diving uh, intervention to end the conflict. America then was a nation of about 32 million individuals, primarily from the British Isles including more than 4 million slaves of African descent. National census in 2000 counted 281 million, and we know we're way up over that now, from 90 different ancestries and denominations. And I want to just share this with you because as we reflect upon our Thanksgiving appreciation, he said in 1863, Abraham Lincoln, we have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But he said back then, we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and reserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that has made us. And so as we bring these reflections to a close, we say the same things today. You know, we are a nation under God with liberty and justice for all. 
You know, I have a great love and appreciation for my studies at the University of Notre Dame in constitutional law. This is the document that holds us together. This is why we send our men and women to defend the freedoms, the freedom that we have, the freedom of religion, of course, the speech and the press and the assembly. These are the reasons that we have a balance uh, of power. Absolute power corrupts. Uh, that's why it's very important that the executive, the legislative, the judicial branches uh, work in such a way that they don't uh, try to uh, usurp or swallow up uh, the powers that are granted uh, to the other branches. This is a good thing, and our founding fathers thought it was a good thing. That's why uh, they made it a republic. Uh, and that's why it's important to have things uh, like, um, well, you, you, you take a look at it, uh, the Electoral College, uh, so that just three or four or five cities don't just determine everything. We are the broad heartland uh, that is in the middle of America. You know, and our values are important. That's why they put in place uh, two senators from each state, give each state an equal voice. But then representatives uh, are there for a couple years, but based on population. And if the people don't like what they're doing, they get rid of them. Uh, they have two years to make something happen or not make something happen. You know, as we translate this into our own spiritual journey, uh, we don't have forever on this earth. That's why this is the last day of the church year that we're going to be celebrating Mass. And we've got to make sure that we believe that what we do makes a difference. We can't earn our salvation, but we can be the leaven. We can be the light. We can be the yeast. The reason I give you so much uh, history, so much foundation, our Judeo-Christian tradition, our Catholic tradition, uh, in union with a, a nation in which we uh, celebrate, I leave you with this one thought. The constitution of the church, the pastoral constitution of the church in the modern world says this. We are in the world, but not of the world. We are to be the light, the yeast, and the leaven for all that is important. We are to make a difference. And even if it means, like Daniel, going to the lion's den, remember, he was unharmed. Nothing happened to him. And all those that accused him, they were put in there. They were devoured immediately. The angel protected them as the angel will protect each one of us. Let us pray. We now bring our needs, Lord. A special thanksgiving uh, for all the many blessings we have and ask you, Lord, to hear us this Thanksgiving Day, 2019. Pope Francis today inspires us with being with us in persevering on the path of fidelity to Christ Jesus. He encourages us to foster a spirit of gratitude. He says... The joy of men and women who love God attracts others to him. Joy springs from a grateful heart. Truly, we have received much, so many graces, so many blessings, and we rejoice in this. He also encourages us to a spirit of hard work. He says, a grateful heart is spontaneously impelled to serve the Lord and to find expression in a life of commitment to our work. Once we come to realize how much God has given us, a life of self-sacrifice, of working for him and others, becomes a privileged way of responding to his great love. May our hearts be filled with gratitude and thanksgiving as we celebrate our national holiday of thanksgiving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, Father Don, Deacon David on his third year anniversary of ordination, Deacon Bob, and all consecrated religious, that our freedom of religious, religion is preserved in gratitude. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Freedom of religion is one of our four anchors in America. The Shakers had great influence on American thought, culture, and spirituality. One prayer known to many Americans 
later enshrined in Aaron Copeland's symphonic work for Martha Graham and her dance troupe, Appalachian Spring, was the Shaker invocation, Simple Gifts. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, will be in the valley of love and delight. We pray on Thanksgiving Day that we will have hearts that are simple, humble, and pure. Blessed are their pure in heart, for we shall see God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Thanksgiving Day reminds us of 1863 and President Abraham Lincoln, who presided over our civil war, tearing our nation apart north and south. Today we pray for healing and hope for our United States of America as we recall a prayer found on the body of a dead Confederate soldier found in Devil's Den after the Battle of Gettysburg. I ask you, God, for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I ask for health that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness that I might feel the need for God. I got nothing that I asked for, but everything I hoped for. I am among all men most richly blessed. This morning, we pray for all our families who are in need of healing and hope. Our special intention is for Jim and Mary Ann Miller. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn during the preparation of gifts is hymn number 463, <coughs> For the Beauty of the Earth, 463. <laughs>
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. God, our Father, from whose hand we have received generous gifts, so that we might learn to share your blessings in gratitude, accept these gifts of bread and wine, and let the perfect sacrifice of Jesus draw us closer to all our brothers and sisters in the human family, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. You have entrusted to us the great gift of freedom, a gift that calls forth responsibility and commitment to the truth that all have a fundamental dignity before you. In Jesus, through the death and resurrection, we find our ultimate redemption, freedom from sin and every blessing. And so, with hearts full of love, we join the angels today and every day of our lives to sing your glory as we acclaim. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And to now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when same evening, he took the chalice and blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we
celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the bishops in your entire people, just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son. So also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of his peace. The Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ Jesus shared among us keep me safe for eternal life.
want to thank all of you for being here. To me, uh, you don't have to be here, but it says that our country, our nation, uh, is a nation under God. It says that Thanksgiving Eucharist is very important in uh, being the light, the leaven, to be in the yeast. It also uh, is a very beautiful way of saying that from the solemnity of Christ the King, we made this shift uh, today to Thanksgiving, and then when we come uh, this weekend, it'll be totally uh, a season of Advent, a time of preparation, uh, all the beautiful festive harvest uh, tones and notes uh, will turn into uh, very powerful um, violets and roses and pinks. Let's all stand and pray. In this celebration, O Lord, our God, you have shown us the depths of your love for all your children. Help us, we pray, to reach out in love to all your people so that we may share with them the good things of time and eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Loving this morning is hymn number 460, For the Fruits of This Creation, 460. Oh. 